This poem is called, Hey, You, Hey. I cross through the park at twilight, my final moments of being myself. Spy a sparrow atop a narrow stone bridge. He must weigh under an ounce, more than I will weigh someday. Light as a feather, light as silk in the styrofoam suitcase of an angel. Light as a styrofoam food container, blowing open and shut, skittering about in the wind. I don't mind if you talk quietly, murmur even, or cast your eyes about, even count coins. Buy roasted chestnuts from the town fool. This is your moment to enjoy. You see the town fool? Hey, you, hey. Atop rounded stones on a bridge tinted blue by the sun in the manicured courtyard of shadows. A common sparrow pecking, tap, tap, tap. The sound carried like a dandelion puffball in the rising wind. Above chestnut sellers hawking their wares, hey, you, hey. I don't mind if you cast your eyes about, even count coins. Enjoy this moment, tap, tap, tap. Floating above the clatter of the marketplace, above machinery on the factory floor. Styrofoam spurting out sluice gates like cascading watery foam. Digital silver machinery humming, ohm, humming like a water moccasin. Above the bicycle food courier, twigs rustle in a nest, my final moment of being myself. In moments with a heartbeat or a missing heartbeat, the old royal family is resurrected as they walk past styrofoam sculptures of their former selves. How calmly they bow, how slowly they glide. I read about them in the newspaper, how they glide along the path, crushing ice with mallets taken down from the wall, how they crush ice, stirring golden honey into berries sweet as love, how they chant silken songs of love each member of the family trained in a mystical art. Reflections in the bubbling stream gaze skyward as they pause upon a narrow stone bridge. Styrofoam coffee cups swirl about their mystical reflections. They point to something tiny darting in the water, weaving its mystical tail side to side. How they shiver at a shadow's touch how lightly the soles of their feet perceive, how like antenna their fingertips perceive, how calmly they bow to the final moment. Drawing 14 assumes new form. After I shattered my ankle, I began sketching for long periods in bed using Sharpie markers on lined paper, then numbering the drawings. Drawing 14 broke free of its mooring and reappeared after migrating across several days. One plus four equals five. Some people say five is a dynamic number, an indicator of flux of positive movement. And some things never reappear. And you realize there might be something else down in the roots you need to want more. And you experience both mystery and loss wearing antlers wherever those came from. And Sir Nunos, the antlered god on the silver cauldron, handles a cobra wherever that came from. As the ankle shattered, I began to fall backwards down steep wooden stairs, somehow twisting my ribs and heaving my weight upwards into a doorway where I collapsed to the floor. I cross-referenced the Celtic god to a figure drawn in clay, sitting in the same yoga pose, surrounded by animals, also like a nativity scene, same antlered horns, same placid cobra, falling backwards across eons, language, culture, history, civilization, love, lost love. Some things never reappear. I rush up the steep wooden stairs two at a time, late for work, put my weight on the ankle turned in at the corner, 
Symbols explode, falling backwards. Sky and roots reappear. My ribs explode. Drawing 14 assumes new form. Donna of the Mountains. A velvet cloak descends held at the four corners by angelics. In the movie of your life, a young actress plays you, gripping a white mane on the wild mare. You ride the horse on a velvet cloak held at the four corners, casting your shadow below. Interlocking grids and squares rush past you. The palimpsest of your laughter and eyes lay across a future cast in stone. Your shadow touches a future cast in stone. The future tries to tear you open, but you are light like air. Strangers kiss your palm. Urchins and hunchbacks, fishwomen and surviving soldiers of the lost war stare at your fingertips wrapped around a crystalline vessel made of light. You raise my heart in a crystalline vessel. Mountain people see you through glass bottles. Echoes on your palm lay upon my heart and the hearts of those near you. Your velvet cloak receives the sun deeply. Your hair is deeply warm. You lay patterns upon futuristic hubris rushing past you. Your echoes travel almost at the speed of sound. A small gesture murmurs in the shadow of the cloak. You ride the horse on a velvet cloak held by the four corners. Your heart beats like a bird forgiving the future. You peel a tangerine. In your perfect song, you forgive the tangerine. You forgive the crown of the tangerine tree as it spreads below the cloak reaching for the warmth of the cloth. You forgive me for confusing iron with obsidian, the future with the past, you with you and me with me. An actor plays me, you forgive me. In a rare act of forgiveness, you forgive fingertips and earlobes. Urchins and hunchbacks, fish women and surviving soldiers of the lost war curve into the night like a windshield, slipping away into the future forgiven. I see you through glass, a rare glass bottle. Below shadows of a horse on a velvet cloak held at the four corners, rivers do what they have always done. In your perfect song, bird forgiveness cast from a greater height fills with mountain cries. Our mountains are small echoes cast from a greater height. Wind carries the wailing mountain chant, lowered into your forgiveness, catching the corner of your shadow, dodging the metallic edges of rushing rectangles, grids, and a future cast in stone. You rearrange mountains, placing the smaller stones nearer. Mountain people see mountain birds through glass. You rearrange the nearest echoes as we sleep. You lay patterns upon hubris. You lay echoes in a pattern. One whisper, one imprint, one nudge from you, a train of consequence in deep space, steering a future cast in stone. Dona of the mountains. As you steer the future, who will protect you? Mountains in slow motion pass you almost at the speed of sound. In the movie of your life, a young actress negotiates narrow streets, gripping a white mane. The laughter and dignity in her composure, interlocking futuristic forgiveness and mountain cries, lay patterns upon hubris. Your servants await your next echo. Your next heart will beat like a bird. You forgive the future as you raise your arm. Your arm casts a shadow, dense as deep space. You bless the five senses, the birds, glass bottles. You bless the horse you ride on a velvet cloak held at the four corners, the future curving like a windshield around you. You attack the future with blessings. You attack the future cast in stone. When we knew for certain all was lost and we were lost, you nudged your horse forward and shrouded by night. Satellite photographs show you never moving forward. Patterns emanate from your holy consciousness. You shade the future, Dona. You lay patterns upon hubris. You shade the future with a brilliant crystalline blessing, Dona. You pointed at fruit that grew on a tree, Dona. You fed me. You lay patterns upon my heart. I knew you then. You must be gone, Dona. It has fallen apart. Small animals and smaller gestures built shapes we explored, fallen away in the loosening structure. Now you must be gone. 
In the movie, you appeared in finely calibrated black and white while the world faded in color around you before the future passed, before your laughter was the crowning finale to palimpsest, your laughter riding the horse, the horse thundering upon the cloak, your laughter, composure, and dignity. We loved each other like magnets buried beneath the open sky, like cigarettes in the open field, like mosquitoes in the lower fields, like spiraling glass bottles and sun rays straight as arrows, like hooves made of snow, softly you ride. Satellite photographs show you stationary in a flurry like falling snow. Donna, you ride the horse on a velvet cloak held at the four corners by angelics. As if painted by Leonardo da Vinci or the master of surprise, René Magritte. Interlocking grids and squares fly at you as if shot from the future. My ear presses upon the handkerchief you drop, as if I will pick it up, as if my ear presses into it, upon it, my ear presses into you, upon you again, seen through a glass bottle, you forgive me. Theory. Physics, again, standing on its head. Physicists discovering an upside down world. The elementary particles comprising stars can leap, it seems, across time. If there really is time, reappearing and appearing in numerous locations at once. The simultaneous stars stretching across infinity are one and the same, projections of one star. One star only we see here and there, as if altering, as if shadowing our days and years with a spectacularly aloof performance, like the lover you just can't forget. The book Memoir was published in December 2019 by Quattro Books when Luciano Acabella was the publisher. I took Luciano my early ideas for the book, and I think it struck him as a little bit silly. He said, no themes, no thesis, just give me the puzzle pieces. And then he said, constellations. So it was left to me to interpret what constellations were. I created constellations made of vignettes. Each vignette has a word in common in the constellation. The book is made up of constellations. I'm going to read a constellation of vignettes now from Memoir, Quattro Books, 2019. My great-grandfather, hair white as a lamb, lay in his wooden casket in the farmhouse living room. A chicken in a wire coop peed orange pee on the straw, and I said orange juice. He laughed with great-grandmother, like I'd said the funniest thing ever. They explained chicken feed. I gave poetry workshops in the Eastern townships and read a poem or two. We went into a bakery. The baker was listening to classical music on a French radio station. A wooden table sprinkled with flour and covered with bread and pastries listened also. Eurydice spoke in her high school French. His eyes twinkled. She said he understood me. The tour guide showed us a wooden table and said, this is where George Washington Carver did his earliest experiments. I looked at the table beneath a window and the sun like rain outside the window, splattering bushes and George Washington Carver bent over a silver microscope, adjusting the focus. The tour guide stood beneath an enormous tree outside the building. This is where the night riders strung up his master by his thumbs. I pictured them riding out of the grove, beyond the field, 
through the scraggly trees draped in dark blankets. He said the word wire. I pictured a wooden ball in my chest. It appeared one day after being underwater for a very long time, although I think that would have cracked it. Soon after, I discovered a druidic oral tale written down in the medieval era and housed at Trinity College in Dublin. The cauldron in the chest receives poetic vocation and can be flipped upside down or right side up by extreme grief or joy. We drove up and down red dirt roads on the hills leading to the white wooden church where a friend of my parents was being baptized. A glass tank filled with water sat on the elevated wooden stage. The believers about to be baptized climbed the ladder one by one wearing white robes. Their robes spread out in the water in slow-mo, white luminescence like mystical visions captured in the depths of the folds of the cloth, as three-dimensional and richly shaded as Susanna's white hat and Thomas Hart Benton's Susanna and the Elders, although she is going into the water without a stitch. I attended Benton Elementary School, named after his senator father. The way Thomas Hart Benton painted the fish hatchery made it seem like France. I spot a wooden sign full of bullet holes that showed a cartoon of two people drinking coffee. The cartoon word said, Mother Brown's Diner, best coffee for 100 miles. I said, we have to visit this place. Eurydice said, it will be a waste of time. The wooden sign must have been there since the 1930s. Maybe Bonnie and Clyde took a shot or two. Maybe Edward Hopper sketched the scene inside the window. When we got there, she wouldn't get out of the car because moths hovered around the screen door. The men at the counter were the salt of the earth. Hamburgers sizzled and flapjacks flipped. I ordered two coffees to go spit my first insipid mouthful onto the gravel driveway. She said, I told you. Valley mother. <clears throat> I labor in dream time, seeing beyond stone shadows, into and through the blue stone valley, crossing a hollowed salt bright valley in dream time crossing. Valley mother, I beseech thee, sustain, protect, and avenge the innocent. In a tomorrow without you, blue worms of light illumine the basin. Valley mother, I beseech thee, in a tomorrow without you, the flesh of your eyelids smeared with ash, the rings of your hawthorn heart beating, your aqualine profile marks a clay vase. I enter the oldest city. Valley mother in metallic hair and neolithic stone, grant me rain. Flood the ceramic boulevards of cruelty. Grant mercy upon the innocents. In your hawthorn fingertips, shape the aquamarine air surrounding innocence. In twigs, I am milk. In milk, I bring obsidian sleep. Valley mother in tar like sunshine, filling cracks and fissures. In violet and yellow sunlight, warming aquatic creatures, dreaming lost anchors. In floating orbs of Neolithic tar, in the sky map carved into stone. At the edge of the oldest city, your aquiline profile marks the violet tree. Roots reach into the aquifer. Traces of your aquiline profile shimmer. I lose my claw, retracing my steps. Cracked and filled stones taken from the valley contain round anchors. Extinct fish dart below the ash gray water line. Fragments of the flooded marble amphitheater cast pale flickers. Blue worms of light illumine the sky map. Stone spirals echo the rage of my left hand. Night flowers rooted in your spine echo the invisible city. My crooked finger twitches in the ceramic boulevard. 
Valley Mother, smoothing slow motion night upon my face, I beseech thee, cast iron rain upon their belly of cruelty, ear of purple salt, and nose of hissing tar. I bring down language embellishing the ancient tombs, casting shadows. In Hawthorne music, wooden wheels roll upon constellations. Your fingertips caress white oxen. I bring down language formed of clay hardened beneath a wooden sun, the burning Hawthorne sun sailing and sinking. A violet tree drips oil. Your aquiline profile upon a clay vase shimmers like oil. The innocent climb into an ultramarine blue bed underwater. Valley mother disappears into atoms the size of Roman nails. My left hand starved of blood. My left hand starved of constellations. I climb into the rage of my left hand. Spiral stones bring weather upon stone anchors. I whisper below the waterline. A vase drips oil. Starlight petrifies within your spine. We have been traveling so very long. I have no clock, only weather. Weather grant me ash, ash from fire, ash from seeds. I steal language from your hawthorn eye, curving into the unknown chambers. Wiping salt from my eyelid, I follow a dog into subterranean chambers. His barking echoes. I lose my way summoned by a thin red trickle. Your feet served of blood, your feet planted, rooted in the tomb of the sky, buried and totemic. When I hammer, I dwell within your echoes. You step lightly between shadows of all you have washed. There is no tomorrow without you. In blue clay, I dial into dream time, rising from the sleep of silent underwater animals. I make the fist of youth in milk I fought for the cave. I remove the stars rooted within your spine. Your tears wash the sky. You sleep now beyond the dreams of flowers. I have been through the valley, beyond the oasis, into edges meeting edges. Two eyes set in stone blink. Beyond the oasis, I stumble into a tomorrow without you. Forever echoes the rain I summon. As it was in the beginning, it shall be obsidian. For all time, mercy upon the innocent. I have been through the valley where stone carvers hammer sky maps, where the astonished awaken. Disintegrating fragments remain in my antiquarian blue left hand. Hammering, harrowing, I kneel to one knee. I swallow echoes. Cobalt blue waters touching the sky stain my left hand. The opaque sky, a naked and empty tomb. I lay my hand upon blue stone. I touch your heartbeat within a clay vase. I am lashed to a tree as spirals of blue light flow into the bend of the river within your spine. Eons awaken. Two eyes set in stone see me. My left hand sleeps beneath the howling wind. Ash from sea from ancestors, ancestors lashed to a tree. Within the Roman nail, rain slashes. Valley mother, grant me tomorrow in sandstone and limestone. There is no tomorrow without you. Mercy upon the innocent basin. In Hawthorne, a secret symbol. In music, a secret sign. In the ash of seeds, a secret dream. I have been through the valley. Stone spirals protect the secret. Hammering and harrowing, my left hand unveils an upright stone. In silence, I invite the dream of the universe into my left hand. In the blue shadows of my hand, the universe unveils an upright stone. Valley Mother, sustain me in the ash of shadows. In dreams of animals, avenge the innocent. Protect me in the valley of the pale amphitheater, beginning all stone, your neck warm. A burning sun grows, expanding to the size it was in the beginning. I dare not touch the fire. My left hand in cool shadows, expanding to the size it was in the beginning. I dare not touch the shadows. In forever animals echo, 
a small stone in the oldest city rolls into the shadow of ruins. The oldest city echo sounds and colors of an even older city. In the center of your heart, the oldest city goes about its business. You are the oldest city in the center of my heart. I labor in dream time, seeing beyond stone shadows, into and through the blue stone valley, crossing a hollow salt bright valley, in dream time crossing. Valley mother, I beseech thee. Once upon, I waited for my parents in the car. They were gone so long, the strip mall crumbled and collapsed. Animals pressed their noses to the windows. It rained for years. The car was covered in ice. The inside turned to wood, then clay, then stone. The parking lot became a forest. People in small groups walked past, speaking languages I didn't understand. My shoes disappeared. The car grew longer and higher. I saw light in an opening far away. My glasses disappeared. I built fires. I smeared colored powders on my palm and stamped the walls of the cave. I painted deer. I ventured outside to hunt. I met other hunters. I ran faster than I'd ever run before. I fed my children. My mother woke me with whispers. My father laughed. I touched them. They crumbled and collapsed. The wind carried them away. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the material and goodbye.